So just to get everybody on the same page, there was a huge earthquake, but there's earthquakes all over the world. But this one was 9.0, and it was centered off Fukushima. Created a tsunami. The tsunami also went in and hit the Fukushima prefecture, where the nuclear power plant is, head on, with uh, a lot of force behind it, and up to 70 feet in some areas. It inundated the nuclear power plant itself, and it wrecked carnage. It flowed freely around that site, and it wrecked more carnage. And there's no uh, doubt that that entire site was inundated with water. And the people went in after, and you can see in the dry cast areas that uh, the wreckage is in there, of course, because the wreckage in this area is, is at a ferocious. You can't swim across something like that. That's uh, flowing very strongly. Um, you can see the background is actually higher. And it, this is the back of uh, the reactor pumping house. And you can see that's destroyed uh, from wreckage. Now, this is the four reactors. You can see three of them got their tops blown up. And so that was huge explosions. And But there was four explosions right there. And there's about a thousand different kinds of radioactive material that got released. A thousand different types of, uh, types of isotopes got released. And you got a nuclear accident and a tsunami to clean up. The nuke stuff has to go into bags, particularly, but there's 30 million tons of nuclear waste in Fukushima alone. That's um, smoke in, and it's no good for anything, of course, and there's dead bodies among that. It's a never-ending disaster. And TEPCO, now the Japanese government themselves, had created a law where no one could scrutinize what they're saying or counter say anything about it. So they even paid $12 million yen was being spent by the city because they were going to be burning that carnage that you see, the 30 million tons. Now, after this accident, they tried using helicopters, dipping it in the salt water, and that didn't work. Uh, there was a meltdown in reactor number one in five hours. Reactor three melted earlier than reported also. This was an explosion at the number one reactor. And reactor number one's fuel rods were completely melted by May the 17th, 2001. This is another shot of that detonation for number one reactor. And that's what it looks like on the top of unit one. And you can actually see the detonation in this picture. On the roof of it, you can see it's total carnage. And a little closer up shot for everybody. You can see the building is totally destroyed. But reactor two had cracked containment vessel that allowed the release directly from the melted nuclear core. The radioactive plume was blown south at that time, they said, on that particular day. Now, because that was a meltdown, the radiation never stopped coming out of there. They say it went south. 1.6 billion becquels of radioactive material was released from the number two reactor late Sunday. That's June the 20th, 2011. Now, radioactive material being uranium and plutonium, because that's what nuclear power plants run on. They don't run on cesium or bananas or iodine. They run on plutonium and uranium. Of course, this is unit two. You can see complete carnage. And TEPCO analysts had said that 94% of the nuclear fuel had melted in reactor number three on May the 26th. So that's one, two, and three so far. And here's a good shot of Unit 3. You will find a link under the video of these pictures. You can download them yourself from TEPCO's site. And this was a fireball from Unit 3. So once again, we're just making sure everybody's on the right page. Because these were huge explosions. And on top of these buildings were storage pools of fuel rods. 1,535... And there's 80 rods in a bundle, that's 122,000 rods that are being atomized and aerosoled and spread all over that site. Is what you need to keep in mind. And this is Unit 3. You can see it blew its top. 
and this is max fuel. The max fuel is two million times more dangerous than any other reactor on the planet. And Chernobyl was one third the size of these reactors, and you can do the math. It was a 30% meltdown also at Chernobyl. This was a 100% meltdown in this reactor again. We'll keep going. Unit 4 pool, according to the Fukushima 50, boiled dry, raising the specter of a nuclear fission chain reaction in number 4. So here's a picture of Unit 4. I don't know where the pools are, but um, it would be hard to pick them out in that picture. Now, that picture, once again, you can download it from under my page from TEPCO's website itself. That's Unit 4. And the damaged fuel rods are cracked and leaking radioactive gases in Fukushima Unit 4. So there's probably a pool down there somewhere. And the wires appear trapped in the racks. And you can see the pictures that uh, fit into that. You know, the, the pools are full. Each of those handles you see, there's 80 rods in a bundle that connects to that handle. And so those rods are like cigarettes in a cigarette pack. And if they're bent or twisted, and you break them, they release gases, and that's how they blew up in the first place. Enormous amount of plutonium at number four spent fuel pool. That was April 13, 2011. And that, of course, you can see the building is destroyed. And you can see June of 20, 2012, Unit 4 had major impulse sound and damage to the roof on March the 14th. And once again, here's a good shot. You can see how much damage is there. It's, it's through the whole building. It's a complete detonation, if not a nuclear explosion, obviously. This is not just earthquake damage. They said there was fires already at number four, and that the rods had went dry. Now, BBC and CNN and everybody else came out with these pictures and these videos saying this was the inside of that building. Can you imagine that this is inside of that building, that reactor that had a nuclear detonation? And so they tried to sell number four for some reason. But there's an enormous amount of plutonium in number four. And the pool is cracked and leaking. Now this is an interesting one because you can see it looks like there's a net but if you zoom right in with the same pictures, you ended up with no net and a pool that's dry. As you can see, this was the one they had up on the site. And that's the pool. They had to extract it from the original one. I went in with the original one. Now look at this site here. Does that look anything like that pool? Does that look anything like that? So that net is not even real. Uh, Unit 4 caught on fire today. That was May the 4th, 2011. Once again, this is a zoom-in shot from TEPCO site of Unit 4. You can see how much carnage is there. So it did blow up, right? It doesn't look like that on the inside, like BBC had tried to show us a few weeks back. It doesn't look like that on the inside, like all the mainstream media tried to show us a few weeks back. And I don't think, once you see this, that you'll disagree. Uh, the Cobalt 60 was at 1.4 billion becquels a kilogram in the fuel pool. So it showed a chain reaction also went on. It was a nuclear explosion. The nuclear engineer says an enormous amount of plutonium number four spent fuel in danger catching fire. Japan Times. The walls are cracked below ground of Fukushima reactor buildings as if the damage above the ground isn't enough. And you can see this signature, heat signature of the buildings that there's, you know, if the buildings are in bad shape. This was from uh, Japan's TV. Now, reactor number five and six were not in cold shutdown after the quake, which is what they're employing, a report by UN nuclear industry and cooling at the spent fuel pool number five stopped until the cables were installed. So there was definitely trouble there. And that's the buildings, five and six, in front of you. And there was enough cesium found there to drain each gates at reactor number five They couldn't get near it. The level was just too high, 2,300 times uh, what they consider even reasonable. This is the pump houses out in front of number five reactor. 
and this is the pump house in front of number six reactor and the cesium rises by five and six discharge at the highest level in months and so that was on April, I'm sorry, September the 23rd, 2012. Still having huge issues from all the radioactivity all around them. You can never work in that reactor 5 and 6 again. This was damaged out in front of it, um, to the left of it, and to the right of it, or left and right. And, and uh, you can see in this shot here how much damage from the tsunami came along. The pump houses were taken out right away. I should have mentioned earlier, but... The cooling systems at number five stopped working on Wednesday afternoon. That was uh, come out March the 23rd. Now, you can see the water inside of uh, buildings five and six, and it didn't, in the pictures that are below, you can download them yourself, it shows these pictures as five and six. We don't know what's what, 100%, but we do know.